the current state of copper pot science. We're going to review three primary uh, subtopics here. First, the state of copper pots today defined by the FCC. We're going to talk about the ecosystem of solutions associated with copper pot lines. Then we're going to talk about common pain points that often go hand in hand with those legacy systems uh, that a lot of customers are uh, saying that they are experiencing today. So let's get into it. I figured it would be best if we started with a plain and simple definition of what a copper pots line actually is. When you say pots line to people, it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. If they're well versed in the telecom space, they know immediately what you uh, they know immediately what you mean. If they're not, they might literally think you're talking about a uh, planting pot, a flower pot, or something like that. So to contextualize, got a great quote from a post from Nextivia back in 2018, but these are basically uh, a plain old telephony service line is what POT stands for. It's basically an analog voice transmission phone that is implemented over copper wires. That's why we say copper pots in a twisted pair. Most of us grew up on this. Uh, we had the old uh, landline phones, and if you had multiple lines within your household, you had a pesky sibling that always listened into your calls. I know that I did, but uh, these have become less and less common in the residential space, but are still very common in a number of business related applications, which is what we'll lean into uh, today. And lastly, to note, they've been used since the 1880s. So this is an old technology. The good thing is it's been reliable. The bad thing is we're moving forward in terms of our communication systems as a world and people that don't wanna make the switch are going to be left behind. And uh, we'll talk about a few reasons why here in a minute. So some typical applications that are connected to copper pots lines out there in the field, a few things we'll go over here. It could be anything from your business phone system. So if a customer, has or a business or maybe a government agency has an old legacy PBX, the PBX being that voice traffic call flow routing system. Uh, effectively think of it as a uh, primary router for your internet traffic, same thing for phone traffic. You could have copper lines punching into that and then going out to old uh, pot style phones, business phones. You could have your classic fax lines, the elevator call box, of course, then anything from ATMs, We've had customers in the education space report to us they have copper lines running the panic buttons. We've had major enterprise companies say that they have copper pots lines running to their fuel tanks at their manufacturing facilities that their utility can ping and see what that fuel meter read uh, is at any current time. Uh, and then also HVAC, emergency call boxes on a college campus. If you've ever seen a campus blue light tower out and about on campus, most of those are backhauled by copper pots lines to get calls out to the internet, SCADA applications, access control, much, much more. So it goes well beyond business grade voice lines to cover a whole spectrum of different what we would call IoT or M2M applications in the enterprise or the public sector today. So state of pots as defined by the FCC, Right now, by their count, there are about 36 million active POTS lines in the United States today. Each customer is paying an average cost of anywhere between $65 and $100. If they're coming in well below that, they probably have a massive amount of lines deployed out in their operating environment today, so they're getting a great volume discount. But as these lines become increasingly uh, harder to maintain and support, there will be cost increases. A lot of them have been cascaded out and reported to us by customers uh, even over the past three months. So, but 36 million, that's a staggering amount for any of our carrier partners on the call today. That is a huge opportunity to join this movement where we're going to cut that copper out of their architecture and put them on an LTE backhaul for some of those mission critical applications we just talked about on the back last slide, all while saving them uh, some money and adding some features we'll cover here in the next section. Uh, lastly, for those with existing POTS line, the FCC has mandated that they would like for major providers to sunset by uh, the beginning of August in 2022. Now, we'll see if they're firm on this. 
uh, understandably that business drives support, right? So if a large chunk of that 36 million is still on copper lines, they're not going to just flip the switch off and disenfranchise a lot of folks, but there is pressure from a federal regulatory level for carriers to sunset their POTS lines and for customers to transition to an alternative solution like a POTS over LTE solution. So let's talk about common pain points. We've defined what our copper POTS line is. We've defined what solutions are connected to them. We've even talked about uh, the current state of copper POTS in our country uh, based on reportings and findings from the FCC along with their mandate to sunset. So now let's talk about some of the pain points that customers out there in their business or in their agency today might be experiencing. So the number one pain point we hear with customers today, and we already touched on this a little bit, copper pots lines are simply too expensive. On average, the FCC reports anywhere from 65 to $100 per copper POTS line. The thing to understand, let's take an example, let's take a school district. School district has 10 schools. All of them are two-story. They're required to have an elevator for equitable access to the second floor. Each elevator has a call box and therefore each elevator has a copper line. So they've got 10 total across their operating environment. If they were to have two elevators per school, that would require a second line. So it's a true one-to-one -one solution for each uh, piece of instrumentation or technology that requires one for a communication backhaul to make outbound calls to the internet. You have to have one copper line. If it's 65 to $100 average, the expense adds up quick. It is billed as a monthly utility. So for our carrier partners, not dissimilar from your data plans and your customers uh, <clears throat> bill today. So that's one pain point. The other part of that is because copper pot systems are so antiquated, carriers are really not encouraging customers to continue deploying them because there are exceedingly less and less year by year companies that specialize in the maintenance and upkeep of these copper pots line systems. So when support becomes more scarce, price goes up. That's also a deterrent for customers to look for alternative solutions like an LTE backhaul solution. So uh, they could be paying anywhere from $65 to $100, but in some reports from our customer base, uh, specifically in the Missouri area, we've seen where um, some carriers are about to 3x their copper pots line pricing as early as Q4 of this year. So it's becoming really, really urgent for a lot of customers out there today. It's a really easy conversation to have. Um, from a lack of support standpoint, uh, there typically is no monitoring platform or remote management platform. A lot of LTE enabled endpoints, let's take a Cradle Point router, Sierra router, Peplink router, or otherwise, or even some of your edge uh, switch solutions from Cisco, D-Link, et cetera, all have cloud management platforms, right? So when there's an outage, the IT personnel know that something has gone wrong and they can jump on it from a single pane of glass immediately. So uh, <clears throat> this kind of touches both lack of support and monitoring. So there's no software tied to these copper telephony lines. So there's no way for IT personnel to know, is a copper line up? Is it down? They don't have visibility or monitoring on them. Moreover, what we talked about, there are less and less companies that specialize in the upkeep of these legacy uh, communication systems. So the pathway to support from your provider is often very muddled. It's not easy to get to. If anybody's ever been on the phone with their ISP provider, Comcast is down here in Knoxville, Tennessee, you know how much of a pain it is to go through that process, you get put on hold. I call it uh, the on hold customer service purgatory. And you don't know when you're going to get out on the other side and get a resolution. So it's the same pain for copper pots lines today. It's not a quick fix. Often when you find the right person, it might be days before they can get somebody out to assess what the issue might be, whether that is a conduit was cut in the ground, weather came through, natural disaster came through and knocked out a lot of telecommunications, what have you. The fact of the matter is a true lack of support and a, a lack of a clearly defined pathway to support and the total lack of monitoring 
are huge pain points. And lastly, I'll drive this home, is that a lot of customers out there, whether in the business or the public sector, get sweaty hands, especially when they have multi-location enterprises or agencies, when the fire marshal comes to town and has to audit all of their elevators, fire alarm panels, burglar systems, et cetera, for active communication lines for those call boxes. If they're down, that opens them up to a risk of a fine. Moreover, in a emergency situation, if a kill elevator call box is out, IT personnel has no way of knowing. That introduces a lot of liability for that business owner or that public sector entity or agency as well. So this is of paramount importance. We need to find a solution that is going to cut cost, is going to increase the amount of support and clearly define a pathway to support. And we need a solution that is going to provide a total uh, monitoring capability in real time for the customer so they know when one of their elevator call boxes goes down, they know when one of their campus blue lights goes down, they know when their HVAC is out or that utility line running to the fuel tank is non-functional. All these are very critical uh, across different businesses and public sector agencies. So we've got to find a solution for it. So with that being said, that rounds out our first section covering the state of copper pots lines today. Now we're going to move on to the evolution uh, of this type of communication with a POTS over LTE solution from RCN Technologies. So we're going to talk about the architecture. We'll talk about the use cases which might be a little bit redundant, but bear with us. And then lastly, we're going to do pain point resolution over that cost, support, and monitoring slide that we just covered on the previous slide. So let's hop into it. So RCN Technologies does have a POTS over LTE solution. Uh, this is a solution that can effectively cut the copper in a customer's operating environment out there today and connect a lot of those use cases that we talked about on a prior slide and at a really cool scalable level. So this is a helpful Visio diagram that we wanted to include here to walk you through the architecture of what RCN Technologies is offering. So I don't know if you can clearly see my mouse on the screen here. If you can't, just bear with me. I'll try to call it out as best I can. But you'll see up here, we typically start in a uh, legacy POTS enabled system where you have old uh, telephony services, copper lines, they're usually loops. It looks kind of like a rat's nest of loops up on a, a telephone pole, uh, but they're typically up here. They're traveling into, let's say, Susie's Flower Shop, Joe's Plumbing, maybe a county school district, uh, whatever it might be, into their building. They're traveling into what's typically known as a 66 block. Now, we could also call this a demarcation point where all their telecom typically ties into uh, at the edge of that building. Or we could say this is where their PBX, if they're primarily focusing on getting rid of old legacy on-prem PBX copper-backed phone, uh, services. But at the end of the day, typically these copper lines are punching into what's called a 66 block, which if you've ever been in a telco closet and you've seen this little box on the wall, sometimes they're orange, um, and you've seen a rat's nest of wires punched into it, that's what your 66 block is. That's what's taking that copper signal and then taking an RJ11 and then punching out the other end and punching into a lot of the devices you're going to see over here on the left hand side. Again, business phones, fax solutions, ATMs, utility meters, P uh, <clears throat> POS systems, fire alarms, elevators, the list goes on and on. So that's what a typical legacy system looks like. So let's talk about how we uh, shift that and move it over to an LTE backhaul system. So what we'll do is we come in with our solution kit. It's an entire enclosure that mounts up on the wall directly next to that 66 block. What's included with that is a translation device with RJ11 ports to punch you know, the RJ11 devices heading in from the 66 block over here, punch it into our translation device, otherwise known as an ATA. It also has a gateway uh, in it that that voice traffic, when it's initiated from one of our uh, instrumentation pieces or solutions over here, is going to uh, activate a SIP trunk 
that RCM provides from our own uh, in-house brand onto that ATA. The ATA is handling that analog pot signal to digital transformation or translation piece, activating that SIP trunk for dial tone, and then it's getting it out to a cellular gateway uh, to get it out to the internet. Of course, that cellular gateway being backhauled by the carrier of choice by the customer. So what's great with this is that you have a, a primary wireless line, all of the calls and all of the data transfer commands that are being initiated by our utility meters, our fax lines, our legacy pot style business phones, our elevator call boxes, our campus blue lights are going right back into that 66 block via an RJ11. The other RJ11 is punched in to our ATA in our enclosure the, eight, the <clears throat> signal is translated from analog to digital. It is then moved into the cellular gateway to get out to the internet as a completed call. So that's generally how the architecture works. Not only that, but so that's how we cut the copper. What's most important, if you think about it, are three pain points, right? We are also getting, with the gateway we have in there, a cloud management platform. We are also looking at a management platform on the SIP trunk we provide and a couple other ways that we can get visibility and monitoring on that for a customer. And it's all managed back at RCN Technologies, at our NOC, uh, our customer service team and our POTS line replacement ex expert team is constantly monitoring this and jumping into action whenever there's an outage for our customers today. So this is in general how the architecture looks like. What I will say, and we covered this earlier, remember that as many of these devices a customer might have today on a copper legacy system, they're gonna have one to every POS system, every utility meter, every fax machine, every business grade phone, every elevator. So it's a true one-to-one -one solution on that old telephone service network with a copper line. With ours, our device has scalability up to 16 lines can be punched in to a single RCN POTS over LTE kit. What I mean by that is we have scalability here. No longer is it a one-to-one -one solution, but it is truly a one to 16 solution. Now, there's some costs that come with scaling lines. We won't cover that in the uh, webinar today, but in terms of cost effectiveness and reducing the overall spend from the customer, being able to support 16 lines that might be supporting these devices in a 66 block today with copper backhaul can be moved and supported with one of our units. So uh, let's just say to make it easy, you've got 16 elevators at a building, 16 elevators are punched into a 66 block in a telco closet. There is 16 copper lines supporting those 16 elevators. Well, we can decommission those and punch them all into one of our units here to drastically reduce the overall cost of individual POTS lines for the customer today, all while getting them uh, 4G, very reliable uh, wireless backhaul, cloud management platform, and dedicated monitoring and support. I know that was a lot. There was a lot to cover on that slide. So definitely, if you have questions, write it down. Let's go over it again in the chat later on during Q&A. So use cases, redundant, right? We covered this in the POTS ecosystem slide in section one. Well, here again, we're basically supporting the same things. Business grade phones on POTS architecture, elevator phones, campus blue lights, SCADA applications, HVACs, metering, you name it. Everything we've already covered is supported by our solution today. With a caveat, we do have a secondary solution that isn't scalable, it is true one-to-one -one for our fire alarms, simply because uh, the fire marshal requires a very specific uh, NFRA certification on any wireless communications backhauling a fire alarm system. And we are chasing that certification. It's expensive. We don't have it yet, but the plan is to drive there in one to two years. So everything else other than the fire alarm you see on here today is readily supported. Elevators, campus blue lights, fax lines being the biggest ones we find out there today. And also those old PBX copper back phone lines. So pain point resolution, kind of a reiteration, we covered it. Low cost, what we're finding is we're saving most customers anywhere from 20 to 
on their POTS line cost per POTS line on a monthly billable basis. Uh, our solution does go on a 36 month contract. So on a three year term, they are gonna save anywhere from 25 to 50%. We do this thanks to the scalability of our product. Remember I said that it can support up to 16 concurrent POTS lines that are terminating into the same telco clause at our demarcation point that the customer has today. It is not one to one, it's one to up to 16. And so there are very radical cost savings involved in that. When you average out the total number of lines uh, by the, the number or the monthly billable number of the unit as a whole, it's fully, fully supported. As I said, we do this through the Gateways cloud management platform. By the way, the Gateway can be any flavor of the customer's choice. We have a standard if they don't have a choice, but it is an OEM agnostic uh, gateway or solution. So. Uh, we can put a cradle point device in there. We can put a Sierra wireless device. We can put a peplink device for our carrier partners. Really, it's about what device is best going to uh, support your network and your coverage in that area. For customers, if they already have a, let's say, mature Sierra deployment and they are comfortable with that solution, they believe in that solution, fantastic. We can put that in there and say that that is backhauled by their favorite uh, LTE router manufacturer, in this example, Sierra Wireless. But again, OEM agnostic, each and every OEM router that we put in there does have a cloud management platform, and that is how we primarily achieve fully uh, managed monitoring and support for our customers, 24-7 uh, monitoring as well. Basically what this looks like, if one of their lines go down, we're notified immediately and our team jumps into action before the customer even sees their email notification on their end. So it's adding a tremendous amount of value to them because now they have a clearly defined pathway to support. They know when their lines go down and so no longer do they have to go out and spend hours auditing site by site. Uh, think about a college with up to 400 lines campus blue lights, they have to go check every single building's telco closet to make sure each one of these pieces of instrumentation is enabled by a copper line that is still functional. That is a huge cost and time sink for the customer. So in terms of a tangible cost saving on a month to month billable basis over a 36 month period, the scalability of our solution really allows us to drive costs down for the customer versus that 65 to 100 on average they're paying today for copper lines. It's fully supported. So that means uh, in terms of the non-tangible cost saving, IT personnel man hours spent auditing these lines, trying to find out who can come fix the lines, et cetera, that eliminates a huge amount of time and frustration for them for non-tangible cost savings in terms of hourly overhead, that kind of thing. So that is how our solution resolves these pain points today uh, for customers out there that have them. Recap. So we talked about the current state of copper pots. Remember, 36 million active in the United States. There is a huge amount of opportunity. Some of that is residential, yes, but a majority of that is in the enterprise and or public sector space, also the SMB space as well. So let's definitely chat and think up and talk about how we can drive uh, this solution uh, to our customers and uh, kind of cut the copper, save them a lot of money, get them a lot of features. We talked about how they can evolve their traditional copper communication game with RCN's POTS over LTE solution kit. And then lastly, let's talk about next steps here. Now that we've been educated about the solution, educated about how it can resolve common pain points for our customer, from cost to proactive monitoring and support, how can you learn more? You're interested in what you've learned today, you wanna to know more, a couple different things. RCM frequently hosts webinars like this where we go into live in-depth information and Q and A's on all the applications and solutions that we offer to do things from cutting copper pots lines to save money and add monitoring and support, all the way to uh, wireless pop-up network solution kits that customers can deploy with a push of a button out there to support any number of applications. We're frequently publishing articles on the latest developments out in the 5G and LTE world and landscape today. Lastly, follow us on social, primarily Facebook and LinkedIn for developments, product release announcements, different bits of bite-sized info and blog posts 
that our dedicated team of specialists is updating frequently. Lastly, I wanted to leave you with our guarantee, right? So we talked a lot about our solution. So who are we? Well, effectively, this is who RCN is. 5G and LTE enablement company. Now, what does that mean, right? 5G is a buzzword. Enablement can mean a lot of things. But what I believe it means is that we truly partner with not only our carriers to understand their 5G roadmap and strategy, but we also partner with our OEM manufacturers to understand their roadmap and strategy. And then we take that knowledge, we distill it, we synthesize it, and we come along our customer base to effectively guide them to the right solution every time. Because at the end of the day, we believe that their connectivity for their business operations or for their mission critical operations in the public sector, staying connected is everything on those. That's how the world moves today through connectivity to the internet. And 5G is the way of the future through that. So at the end of the day, we're going through our proven process you see there on the left to get the customer the right solution every single time. For today's webinar, we truly believe our POTS over LTE solution kit is the right solution for everything we've talked about today. So what can you do? You are very interested in what you've heard today. So if you're an attendee, you are more than able to schedule a free one-on-one -on -one POTS over LTE or PULTE for short consultation um, we are offering uh, demos or we have the capabilities of doing personalized demos depending on what the customer's use case is, what your use case is if you are a customer, uh, what your customer's use case is if you are a wireless partner or a OEM partner. We can plan a proof of concept with them and then of course we can lead with the need as we say here at RCN, discuss what they're trying to accomplish and really tailor those solutions to meet that. Again, our solution for POTS over LT is very customizable and scalable so we want to make sure sure that we meet their needs and resolve their pain points effectively. Uh, if you want to talk to RCN, you want to get in touch with me, uh, I will point out that the number in green right there, the 865-293-0350, that's our main line. So feel free to call that for general inquiries. Inquiries. Sorry, that public sector email is my team's distro. So if you are not in the public sector, I would definitely encourage you to call the main line or if you are in the public sector, email the distro or shoot me a note as well. There's my contact information on the left-hand side, along with my office number, direct line, and my cell phone. Bug me. That's what I'm here for to help you.